Almighty God, we just come to you uh, grateful once again for the opportunity to serve uh, in such a, uh, a unique community and uh, people. And, uh, and we pray that what we do tonight we will honor you and glorify you. I pray for these that are here to participate in our meeting, our staff. Thank you for the documents they prepared. I uh, pray that we give careful consideration that our deputies pray your uh, blessing on their family and, and, uh, and those that keep them safe as they control our streets. Uh, I would pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And I'll pour the first. Mr. Recorder tonight. Mr. <laughs> Can I say Matt? Uh, Mr. Recorder. Commissioner uh, Wesley Wright. Here. Commissioner Matt Wright. Here. Commissioner Plunk. Here. Vice Mayor Roman. Here. Mayor Bunker. Here. Uh, Mr. Recorder, first time. Um, public hearing, they're not scheduled. Treasurer's report, uh, we'll have those next week for you. Okay. Um, next item, reports from committees, members of the board of commissioners and other officers, city manager's report. And actually, if I, if I might defer, we do have the, the deputies here. Yes. And after their report, it's not on the right. agenda. That's an oversight, so I'd right. like to take that first. I got Sarge that's going to present. Yeah. Lieutenant, are you, you going to present? Yeah, okay, Sarge. Sarge, come on up there. Sarge, come on. Sergeant Cotton, the Sheriff County Sheriff's Department. I'm here with the crime report for late in January uh, 2018. Um, we had 27 reports that were taken. We're down five from, from this time last year. We also have those reports. Took the time to kind of break that down. Uh, um, we had nine theft from motor vehicles. Six of those were unlocked vehicles. Um, we have one robbery of an individual, we're, they're, uh, they're still working on that, the detectives are. We, and then we had the Walgreens, the can of the road that business was broken into, as I think everybody knows, that's an ongoing investigation. And then we had the robbery at the uh, Shell gas station. Um, as far as, uh, I'd like to remind everybody, I know it's cold weather and everything like that, but please do not leave your cars unattended with them, with them running with the keys in them. This is throughout the county. This is, a, you know, we actually know a, a lot of it right here in Lakeland, but I mean, people, people, it's a crime of opportunity. If somebody sees that car running, nobody's in it. You step inside, you come back, your car's gone. Um, we're seeing a lot of thefts that way. For, and please take just a moment. I mean, even though we push that key fob, you might want to look at your door locks, and make sure that vehicle is locked before you go back into your residence. That's another crime of opportunity. We got kids and uh, some uh, other people that are walking through the neighborhoods and they're checking door locks. And, you know, that's on a uh, nightly occurrence and we're doing what we can to deter it and you know, we put out a lot of controls on that. But that being said, if you take a moment to lock the door, you see them because we see them on these neighborhood cameras. They'll check that door, it's locked or going to the next house. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, we have the potential for a 66% reduction in auto burglaries if you just lock the door. Just like the doors. Just like the doors. And uh, it's other, another interesting thing you said about uh, leaving the cars around. So uh, a girl at my work uh, was telling me the story. She goes, so I left my car running. I went to go fill it. She was at a gas station. I had to fill her car tire up with air. So she gets out of her car running. She goes and gets the machine to fill it up with air. Goes around to the tires. And she said, the tires started to fall. She <laughs> my car and took off. She said, I'm standing there with this air thing. And this guy had Touch me, I was frozen. Like, did, did that just happen? My car just drive off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She said, I'm standing there with everything that just happened. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, people would just take those two things into consideration. Don't leave that vehicle running. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. Crazy. All right. Thank you all for coming. Yes, and uh, we, we always appreciate the report. Did any citizens have any questions for our deputies or anything? Um, and we got smaller than usual crowd tonight and a lot of you guys be safe out there, all right? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, Mr. Manager? Uh, yes, City Manager. I have a, a couple things. 
bring up, I'm going to yield most of my time to a presentation on Beehive. This is one we talked about last month. We deferred it, so we're going to do that tonight. It's going to be fairly thorough, but brief, we're hoping for. So um, a lot will depend on how many questions you have and whatnot. I do want to bring up a couple of things. Um, uh, first of all, I think everyone up here knows former Commissioner John Wilkerson passed away this week. You know, he was a uh, commissioner uh, back in the late 90s, likely commissioner. Uh, he passed away earlier this week. We were notified yesterday about that. Uh, so I want to keep him and his family in our prayers. Um, also, uh, Barry, our own Barry over here, became a grandfather for the fifth time today. Oh, wow. so, congratulations, Barry. Congratulations. Congratulations. And he still came up here. Where are the cigars? Yes. It's bad for your health. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so we're talking about Beehive now and going to this. So this is something, as you know, we've had in place now for uh, about a year and a half. It's our asset management system. So I want to talk a little bit about, I'm going to introduce uh, really a staff member who I don't think you see very often, if at all, in Josh, Com Josh Thompson, our GIS manager. Josh, you're going to take the bulk of this report, and he's also going to chime in for part of it. Uh, so I just want to give a quick overview to get started. Um, this has been uh, a long, a long time coming. I think over the years we've had a need for some sort of, of system to manage our assets. It does far more things, work orders and whatnot also that we're going to talk about in a minute. But this is something that's sort of been desired at a staff level for a long time. We, we were very disorganized in the past. We had uh, different departments keeping records of certain things, and it wasn't it wasn't cohesive among the among the city staff. So a lot of, a lot of problems existed. So Beehive was the answer that we came up with to solve this, and, and I'd like to say this has been a huge success at a staff level. Um, so I want to I want to show you what it is because a lot of this is for internal use for managing assets and your work orders and, and whatnot. There is some public reporting, and I'll come back at the very end and talk about the reporting part of it. Uh, but no one really knows uh, the depth of this. So I want to put up to the public so you know what it is. Um, so I'm going to turn it over now to Josh, and he can lead and kind of give a description of what these modules do <coughs> and how we're using uh, this program. So Josh. Thank you, Jim. So, Jim stated we were we came up with this idea a few years back <clears throat> where we wanted to get a better handle, quantify sort of the performance, sort of the things that we do on a daily basis here as a staff. Um, after several demos, lots of time spent by staff, we decided on Beehive Industries as our solution for asset management. And really, asset management, you, here I'm sorry, you can see some of the modules that this is sort of compartmentalized. You can take as many or as few as you like. And these are some of the modules that we chose to implement here in Lakeland. Um, so really our asset management is, is comprised of two main parts. Um, the first being our spatial data. Um, if I, I roll back real quickly to these, to these goals and obstacles, these are almost the exact same goals and obstacles that we confronted when we developed our GIS system 10 years ago. So we feel real confident that um, we're aware of the obstacles and we can meet our goals. So we come down here and it's comprised of two main parts, our spatial data, our GIS system, and then an asset management system and work order uh, system that basically the GIS portion, the spatial data, tells us where our assets are located and the asset management portion tells us what work is being performed on what assets. So you kind of got the combination of two worlds. Um, so here I've just, uh, I've just kind of selected an area with um, a lot of infrastructure assets. Uh, a lot of times we can forget what exactly goes on in an area, but I selected this area where you can see a lot of things going on here. You can see stormwater, you can see sewer, parks, streets, um, facilities, and all of this is managed by staff and, and maintained by our, by our field crews. So if, if you zoom in a little closer, um, you can see a little bit better, um, more defined um, picture of our assets here. And if you select one of these, you get some basic information. Sorry, I've got a pointer here somewhere. If it works, legacy is the name around from 2005. So we select one of these assets here. I've selected a, a wastewater pipe. You can see some, some pretty, pretty basic data. You can see the pipe diameter. You can see the pipe length, sort of what's connected to it on each side. Basic, basic stuff. You know, I mean, um, we can get more in depth as we go, but this is just sort of how we how we look, um, how we navigate, how we select, and how we view our assets. Um, so the next major component of our 
asset management system is our, our work orders. Uh, this is basically where someone requests um, work to be performed anywhere in the city on any asset, whatever it may be. Here we can we can see any asset, uh, any work order from any department, whether it's last week or last year. Uh, we can see whether it's been um, completed. Sorry, is that as fuzzy to everyone as it is to me? I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm pointing over here to complete it, but so we can see whether it's complete or in progress. Uh, we can see what department worked on it, which person was responsible for it, any comments involved, and overall cost. Um, again, basic data, but if you select one of these, you can drill down a little bit, get a lot more in-depth information. So we select one of these work orders. We can see any work that was performed under that. We can see all of the labor costs involved. We can see all of the equipment, the materials, anything else that was involved. All that is totaled back. You can see the grand total for any job that we've performed. Our, not we, our public works department, field crews, sanitation, all of that has performed. Excuse me, wastewater, not sanitation. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of an example of our, of our work orders. Um, one of the goals that, that we set on the front end of this is we not only do we want to track maintenance of our assets, we also want to track processes. Um, the two um, most obvious would be our permit process and our code enforcement, our violations. Um, so, so here you just see a typical sort of a database, a tabular view of our um, of permits. Um, again, just sort of a high level view, uh, tells you some basic information, where, where the violation occurred, the address, uh, I'm sorry, it's not a violation, where the permit was uh, who applied for the location, where we are in the process. Um, if you select one of these permits, you get, again, a lot more in-depth information. Um, you can see where it is in the permit process. You can see our field crews can see things like the site plan, when they're out doing an inspection, or staff can, can uh, check out the document, the original permit ap application, in case there's any necessary data that they need to uh, relay. Um, code enforcement, same thing. You get this database, this tabular view, kind of an overview. You see where things are. If you select one, you get far more in-depth uh, than just our overview. You get where the violation occurred, uh, the time restraints on the violation, usually a 14-day, something like that, where we are. Um, again, the location. Um, and this is kind of the, the, the same thing for everything. You, you see a database view, you select one, you hone in, you see a little bit more in-depth data. Now, my favorite aspect of this um, is what you can also take these, you can combine, you can see where all this is happening. You can look for, so we've got permits at the time that this was collected, permits all over the city, you can select these, go back, see where, you can look at code violations to see if you, you're having trends, if you're seeing a lot of typical violation, or you know, maybe a specific type of violation going in an area, again, look for trends. Um, but it's always, again, I'm a spatial guy, so I'm kind of biased, but this, this is my favorite aspect of it. I, I, I really think that it's a powerful way of conveying information when you use visualization. Um, so if we move on to some of our asset modules, um, here, this is just, I'll start with wastewater. We selected a, a lift station. And if you go in, you select that lift station, you get a plethora of information. You can see any attached uh, asset or infrastructure. You can see any work that's been performed on that asset. And this is a lift station. This is maintenance heavy. So, you know, we see a lot of things going on here. We can, we can track, make sure it's been maintained like it should be. Um, the field crews can see things like a detail sheet uh, if they need to deconstruct or reconstruct a lift station. Um, they can see things like the sewer plan for that neighborhood to make sure that what they're looking at on the ground matches what's on the plans to make sure there's been any changes. Uh, again, they can see a, a, a blown up, zoomed in version of the detail sheet. Um, so we move on, we do the same thing with streets. We select a section of Canada Road here. We can see all the work that's been performed since we implemented our system. Um, you can see right here, we went over quite a bit uh, with our snow and ice control. Um, but again, any section, anything that's been done will all be recorded here. We can go back and, and review that at any time. Um, another uh, asset that we maintain is our park system. Um, here we select the park. You can see all the maintenance that's been performed at the park. You can see all of the labor, again, all of the materials, equipment, any expense that was, um, 
any expense that was included with that with that work will all be totaled up in this one work order. Um, moving along to uh, our emergency uh, asset, emergency management asset. Um, these are our sirens. We're responsible for maintaining, make, testing, making sure these things, the batteries are operational, that these things work, and our guys do a great job. And we can track that every month. You'll see checked, or if there was an issue, they'll record those in the comments. Um, so far, everything's been fantastic with that. We also maintain our fleet here, make sure that routine inspections, make sure routine maintenance, all of that's been carried out, make sure that that all stays in, in good shape, and you know we extend it as long as we can to utilize that asset. Um, we also um, use these to, to house our inspection data for stormwater to make sure that sites are in compliance or if they're in violation, it's noted as well. Um, and we even, uh, this keeps uh, our documentation and our organized um, data for our MS4 program to help meet some of the requirements for our audit. Um, we keep all the inspection documents are all housed in here, can be printed off if necessary. Um, all of the form data is in here. So if you wanna know anything about any of the inspection sites, you can roll back in here at any time and look at it. Um, and that is a very brief, overview of sort of our modules, how we use them, some of the capabilities. Um, if you have any questions, I'm happy to take them. If, if not, I'm going to roll it back to Emily. Quick question. Sure. Um, the mapping, is that Google Earth combined with some other things? Uh, is it, one of the first uh, slides was Google Earth, and I know it's an older, older image of Google Earth, because that's when it was slow, so that's earlier there. So do we have to wait on Google Earth to update it for you guys to show everything? Do we all go in and We have a couple of options. Okay. Um, this this is actually our data here. Okay. Um, this is but it is you are correct, it is data. Right. This is 2015 imagery. We have a partnership with the county and some other agencies where we update our imagery every two years. Um, now we also um, can use Bing imagery if you if we have an internet connection. We can use the Bing roadmaps, the Bing hybrids, the Bing aerials. Um, that's all they provide at the moment. We we've, we've talked to them about maybe choosing a different vendor or updating on a you know a much more current aerial photography. Um, it hadn't happened yet, but I was that, wondering. Yeah, because it'd be helpful with the more updated it is. It's the more current it is, the more helpful it is. I mean, you right. see right now, this looks nothing like this anymore. Yeah, right. okay. we have a road going through now. So. I have a question, maybe more for Jim. Do you utilize it all for fire? In any way? No. It's really been discussed, but with uh, fleet medical fire fire fire. Like that? Um, I, I can check to see mm -hmm. if there's a fire module. Now, we will definitely be working hand in hand. I mean, GIS and fire work hand in hand. I know when I was in Collierville, I dealt with the fire department on a weekly basis um, a lot. So. Yeah. yeah. Of course, we work out those arrangements. Yeah, the fire yeah. district. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Are we going to talk a little, a little about the productivity piece of this? There was one that was asset management, but there was also a productivity piece of it as well. Is that yeah, I'll so touch on that a little bit at the end. Okay. On that part of it. Okay. So, commissioners, anybody else? Okay. I'll turn it over to you. Uh, I just have a, I just have a few slides, so I want to kind of go into. Um, sort of how it streamlined our process and um, and some of the benefits that we've seen seen from um, bringing this software online. So um, just for example, so for public works and wastewater, um, the way the process is now working, um, so we get a call in from a resident or you know whoever we've got a complaint. Our community services rep, Rhonda, takes the call. She enters the work order of Beehive. It's automatically sent um, to Martin, our public work supervisor, he can assign that job out. The guys have tablets in the field that are mounted in their trucks, so they know what work they need to do for the day. Um, and then they can complete that work work when they're on the site. So it, it's much more efficient than we ever had before. We had a, a work order system prior to bringing this one on that was not spatially based, and, um, and it required us to do all the work inside at, at the public work supervisor's desk. So it was very time consuming. So it's, he would print out a piece of paper, the guys would take it with them, write down their time they spent, bring it back in, and they'd have to enter. So it's made a huge difference on our time. Um, 
in, in <coughs> logging all this information. Um, it's also helped, you know, as far as tracking. So I can go in and I can see how long it takes us to do a job, what kind of equipment, how many hours we're having on our equipment, um, anything that's, that's requiring a lot of maintenance as far as the equipment, you know, that's, that's kind of how I work in the capital um, budget on replacement. Uh, gives us some benchmarking abilities uh, on some of our work so I can tell um, how long it should take us to do certain jobs, um, are we being as efficient as it should be. So um, it's been definitely a huge asset for my department. On the front end, um, this is maybe even more than, than the public work site really streamline our process. Um, before, um, when we would receive a permit, the um, community services rep Denver would print it out and the folder would kind of be passed around to each person for review. So you kind of had a time lag there. Um, now she enters it into Beehive and um, both planning and engineering, we can do our reviews simultaneously. The documents are scanned in so we can look at them right there on our computer. We can approve it, deny it, whatever, make our comments and she, you know, she has it pretty quickly. So um, that's really good. And then our inspectors can also use that information um, out in the field. They can pull it up when all, we're kind of getting away from all the paper copies. So that's really made a big deal. And then as far as going back to tracking, um, we have a much better process of yeah, if someone calls me or calls planning to see if they have a permit, something's happening on a job site, is there a permit for that work? We can find it really quickly. Um, so I've probably gone over most of these. Um, just to summarize, so efficiency is one of the, the big benefits, streamline our process, um, all the data is real time. Um, our work orders and our permits are immediately assigned, we're having lag there. Um, tablets, we have tablets in public works, wastewater, and inspections. Um, and so that, that allows them to complete work while they're going to the next job. Um, and again, permit review, that occurs simultaneously. Our data is now a lot more consistent um, we have the storage, we can, um, I can use it to, you know, look at, at when I'm developing my budgets, see if we are short, you know, personnel or do we need, you know, more people to do this type of work. Um, so it really helps me um, with scheduling and things like that. Um, also with our fleet and equipment uh, maintenance, it, it um, really helps keep up with that as well. Uh, and then, of course, having the GIS mapping behind it, um, when guys are out there, it gives them a way to, uh, gives them a better idea of location and where assets are compared to, you know, different, you know, things in the field. So that's really helpful them. And, of course, it, it's tremendous in helping me budget for um, upcoming projects and things like that. So are there any other questions as far as just our process and how it's really um, benefited us? Anybody have any questions? I just was curious about the benchmarking. <clears throat> Are you starting to see where, how we're stacking up? Are you getting the information you want to see? That's, that was one of the key benefits to me was seeing how long it was taking us to complete a particular type of project and how that stacks up to our expectations. Yes. Um, well, we're, yes, I'm getting there. So um, we're about, we're about at a year of having good data coming in. And so um, that's, so I'm starting to look at that now. I wanted to get a decent amount of time um, into the system so that I can start comparing it. But yes, I'm starting to look at that now. And, and that's very critical. Okay. So just to close out with one, one last aspect of it, it kind of goes to the part of it and, and you know, using this for our benefit, becoming more efficient and whatnot is the reporting part and not just the internal reports. We go and we saw the spreadsheets and everything and the, and the long data list, what and how we use that and I can track it on her side to see how long it takes to do a job and how long it should take to do a job. The next step is actually reporting it and which parts are appropriate to report to the public. And that's something to get customer reporting you're working with Beehive on now to make sure we have a good reporting system that the, for the for the data that's appropriate or the information that's appropriate to get out to the public, we can do that in a very, very easy manner. So that's coming up, so that's the next thing to look forward to. But, um, I, I, I think most people, when they see this, is like, well, it's a lot more involved than I thought it was, but it, it has been a huge benefit uh, to the staff. So uh, moving on from behind, unless there's any more questions on that. I want to uh, next turn, uh, turn it over to Corey, that's part of the city manager report, uh, to do a development report. And this, uh, this is his first time doing this, and this is probably a new feature of these meetings, so it can be customized to how you want to see information presented, but I'm going to turn it over to him and he can 
you can update on developments. Right. Everybody mm -hmm. like everybody mm -hmm. <laughs> Good to see you again. Yeah. Hey. Um, so yeah, like Jim said, uh, being that it's the first formal discussion with you guys from a development point, that report standpoint, I had some specific questions with regard to what you guys want to see. Uh, Ms. Roman has kind of seen the report that I prepared tonight to go over tonight. And I really wanted the feedback to understand what you guys want to see. You guys are very hands-on commission. You know what's happening out there in the world. So, you know, I'd like to streamline it. Um, what I have prepared tonight is very similar. It's the exact same thing Tom has prepared in the past. A uh, list of previously approved plans and flats. And I can run through those quickly. Chapel Woods, uh, as you guys know, the outline plan was approved with contingencies by the NPC in November. Uh, this board uh, deferred that indefinitely. The church HVAC was, the site plan was originally approved with conditions. That site plan was extended recently. The Evergreen Manor is about 30, or it is 32 lots. Site work is near completion. Heron's Ridge C, 39 lots. Uh, site work has begun. Kensington Manor is phase one, 24 lots. Site work is underway, clearing. Um, mobile, the mobile gas station at Canada Road, as you know, DRC approved the signage and facade improvements uh, in November. They're working towards that permitting now. Been working with them closely. McDonald's, the Canada Road entrance is complete. Oakwood Grove individual building permits have been issued in phase one, phase 20 lots, phase 1A, 2A, 3A. They're finalizing their final plat, and phase two is waiting on signatures and development contract. We anticipate a spring start on that development unless something else has changed. Regions Brent, uh, Bay construction's underway. States of uh, Chamber, Chambers Chapel. Board of Commissioners approved the PDP and Phase 1 development contract was approved at the December meeting. I have a late district who are waiting PDP documents still. Pet Hospitals is near completion. Uh, they, they've got some, uh, some signage requests coming in for the DRC. Next hearing on the 15th. Winstead Farms PD, site work is pending and uh, reviewing, Emily's reviewing the Phase 2 construction plans currently. Anything else, there's limited activity. Ordinances, as you know, you guys passed the Alternative Financial Services Ordinance in November, and you guys deferred the first reading of the General Assembly Ordinance. Uh, we're looking at staff alternatives. That is a discussion item at the end of this agenda. We'll speak uh, briefly on that. Um, with regard to home sales and permitting, I have some charts, and again, I can hand this out based on uh, March 4th and November or December. Uh, the stats are up. I mean, the month of December is the latest data we have. There were only three starts uh, in Lakeland. Uh, average sale was 554.26. Uh, the number of existing home sales was 27. Average sale 332. Now, I compared this to Barbara and Arlington to kind of give you guys mm -hmm. uh, where we stand. If you'd like to see a comparison with Pyro or anybody else, it's certainly something we can do very easily. Just let me know. But I took the liberty of, of Looking at Bartlett and Arlington Bartlett. December, new, uh, new home sales is 14. That's down the trend for them. Their average sale price is 292. And the existing home sales was down for them as well, 85. Existing home sales of $183,000 average sale price. Arlington, their December was down. They had a 342, 283. Their existing home sales was up at 25, 235, 35, essentially. I broke that down in comparison to 2017, 2016 numbers. I can go over if you want. I'll probably just hand them out to you. Uh, the specific locations of where these permit or, or permits are happening: Brent Brook Hills. There's one permit. Cool Springs one permit. Long Landing one. Oakwood Grove is ten. Salem Lakes one. Stonebridge three. The Grove seven. The Point one. The Preserve seven. Windsor Grove one. And in rural areas of the city is eight. And beyond that, uh, the only thing different that you, you normally didn't get from Tom is I have a very brief summary, summary on the uh, code violation. In December, we had 32 code, total code violations, 27 residential, 5 commercial. And in January of 2018, 40 total violations, 36 residential, 4 commercial, and there are currently two environmental court hearings. So that's the, the end of my report at, as it's currently drafted, but I would love any input. If you don't have to always email me. Let me know what you guys want to see, and we'll, we'll put that data together for you. Any questions I can answer? <coughs>
is now an appropriate time to talk a little bit about what the city is doing from your point of view on the long land need situation? With the uh, with the clearing? Yes. I, you won't talk about that? Okay. Okay. <clears throat> actually, so far, me, Corey, and Emily are all involved. And so this to this be clear what's going on. Okay, so there's actually two different properties with, with different situations. One, the southernmost property is one acre lot where they're clearing for a home site. They're going to get ready to build a house, a very large house on one acre, pool and everything else. So they have been working on that. The problem, the real problem came in next door in front of Long Landing where we have permanently platted common open space or, or platted permanent common open space intended for the, the uh, scenic corridor for CK Road. Uh, that was, you know, was originally approved as Long Landing and had been growing uh, up for some time. Uh, last weekend, of course, the contractor for the home site that we been worked on that we knew about and permitted uh, was contracted by the owner of Long Landing to just go ahead and, while he's out there, go ahead and clear his whole frontage out, uh, which is a big no-no, obviously. And we found out about it Monday morning, so we, we took action and put a stop on that part of it as the other uh, legitimate permit permittee was finishing his work up. Um, now, I, I understand where the, the Mr. Long was coming from and clearing that it did not look good. The wisteria that had been there for a long time had done some real damage to those trees. Nonetheless, um, he needed approval. Anytime you, you mess with a scenic corridor buffer, it requires planning commission approval and a planting plan and, and a lot of pre-thought going into it, not just a contractor coming in and clearing it on the weekend. So we brought in a, a certified arborist. Some of you may know or remember him, Eric Bridges. I uh, brought him in this week to look at that long landing, what was in there previous, uh, what they took out, what they removed, what the tree density was, what the condition of those trees were, so we can ac accurately assess penalties to Mr. Long for clearing those out of there. That's the first step. Uh, then we'll have him give recommendations on how we replant that in a good buffer, a good scenic corridor buffer along there that we will, you know, it will be consistent with the rest of the buffer that's already in place on CJ Road, but a good mix of, of plants. So he's doing that now, he's started to work on that. Uh, but there will be some fairly hefty penalties, we believe, uh, for that. We'll also make him go back through the process of the planning commission to get the planting plan approved, whatever he does going on in the future. So there's some more work to do on that long landing piece. And again, that, the, the trouble is that was a, a permanent common open space to be cleared, so that's where we're, we're in, in trouble. So that is in progress right now. Can you talk about how it affects or doesn't affect his current building permits? Yes, we have the ability to, to hold any future building permits that he owns of any lots he owns. Now, he could sell the lots to a builder and we wouldn't be able to touch him or hold him up unless we record a document saying that we will withhold building permits until he does this, which we are intending to do and working on. So he still owns four lots in the subdivision. Uh, I believe all of them are on the lake side. So we can hold building permits up. How long does it take to file those documents? Because we talked about filing those documents with, um, right after this happened. There were letters, right, that just need to be registered Correct. in the I assume the registrar's office, or? Correct, who's getting recorded. So, um, so how long does it take to do that? It seems like we should, we should have that done, maybe. Yeah, I'd be about tomorrow, we have it done. Okay. And recorded. All right. Is there something in the future, um, I know because there's gonna be other construction, for sure, you know, commercial, residential, to inform anyone that's a licensed tree company, small or large, don't just go knocking down a bunch of trees. I mean, it seems like he would have known that, but maybe he's not, doesn't, he's not familiar. Is there a way we can, before anyone starts performing services like that, that they check with us and they look at a map or diagrams and, and areas that they're operating in? It's different than something like mowing grass where it comes back. I mean, chopping down the trees are gone. Oh, yeah. So is there something we can do to prevent that? Well, but it wasn't even a tree company or was it just somebody with back of just well, I thought it was a small tree company, oh, a yeah, small, small business owner, I thought. Yeah, and you know, you have to see the contract would know better, for sure. Now, yeah. we looked into this, and we, you know, the first thought was that we need to go after this contract. We should have known better and stopped it from all work. Uh, unfortunately, we can't. We have to go after the property owner who hired the contractor to do the work. So I think, you know, um, you know, how do you educate contractors on getting permits? You think that'd be a, you know, base level piece of knowledge that they would have. Um, but we do have contracts work in town. You know, they get the information when they pull permit to do any work in here that we give them, and, and they should know. And uh, you know, spreading the word. We, we just don't know who's working in town on these smaller jobs all the time. You know, they don't. You know, the owners pulling permits and whatnot. So I don't know the better way to get the word out to these folks. 
I mean, if, if there's a way to categorize it, maybe if they're working along an area that's called like a green space, or whatever you call along CTIC, versus some of their, some, like you're inside an HOA, there's an interior area. I, that's, that's different than if you're working where there's a green space where it's preserved, it's marked not to be mm -hmm. disturbed. Is there a way, I, I don't know if there's a way to filter that or a way to put an extra layer of security. I don't know if that's the best word for it. Yeah. Yeah, we would have thought of that. Getting more out. What has Mr. Long said this week? I mean, I, I understand that he understands how serious it is, but if we talked to him the last few days, and is he. I have not. Yeah, yeah he's, he's aware that we have a significant problem here. Mm -hmm. As we're acquiring data to assess fines and stuff, we're holding out for that at this point. Okay. so that as some of these mature trees that come down, we can have some mature trees in our inventory that are designed to be dug up and, and, and replaced someplace. Because, uh, yeah, because they could have, we'll also have trees fall down from just natural occurrences and we're going to want to try to rebuild our scenic roots as much, you know, scenic routes as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Tree farm basically. Yeah. Like yeah. But you want to look at it for the bottom here. You don't mind. The, equi the equipment to get that done would be a real challenge, I would think. That Big, you know, you got trucks, big spade trucks and stuff like that. It's uh, just a lot of money, but um, I don't know. I don't necessarily oppose it. I would just say that you know, private services maybe uh, because I don't know that we do that a whole lot. Yeah, just trees are like thirty grand. Though, right? uh, I don't think so. Yeah. In the in the nursery business, though, to, to do that right, you have to root crane balls and things. It's pretty labor intensive. That's where the cost comes from. So you know, it's certainly something we can certainly look at, but. We've looked at properties in the past where nurseries didn't do those root greens, and as a result, we were better off you purchasing commercial plant stock as a result. Uh, I can mean, cite one right there and prove that. Well, all right. So, um, all right, next, uh, next item. Is that in public discussion? We have any public discussion? I don't have any cards in the front of the all right, thanks for that. Uh, next item, item Sewerage Commission business, we have none. Uh, next item, consent agenda, approval of meeting minutes from previous meetings, uh, regular meeting minutes, January 11th, 2018. Anyone have any discussion on that? None. none. Next item. Uh, regular agenda, ordinance final reading, amending the fiscal year 2017-2018 budget, passed by ordinance 17-252 and amended by ordinance 17-260. Okay. Uh, brief explanation, looks like 350000 Correct. We actually amended this from the first reading in a minor capacity for an agenda item later tonight. That's for our PR services. Okay, that's right. Budget. I got to accommodate for that, but other than that, it's the same as on the first reading. Uh, unfortunately, Jess was not here yet. <coughs> besides, besides the first, and it, it, that's all the amendment. That's was. correct. All right, so that's before. Correct. All right, next up. Do you want to put that in consent? Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Okay. Well, hang on, final reading on uh, ordinance. Uh, uh, number two, ordinance first reading, establishing the rules for utilization of city parks and repealing all previous ordinances. Okay. The, um, go ahead, sorry. So you get, um, basically just followed up from last month, you know, to uh, kind of get these updated so we're able to keep the parks a little safer, keep the riffraff out later at night right now. Our big one is the parks are open until 9 p.m., especially this time of year. You know, it's dark at six o'clock, so people can be in there for three hours, pick black. Um, so that was kind of our big adjustment. A lot of the other ones are just kind of updating for vision, making sure we're staying compliant with everything. All right. Um, so it's my understanding that this is going to be the ordinance that we're going to use just to lay out the rules specific 
things that we don't permit in our parks and uh, how things are supposed to work. We're not going to see this on the sign. Because when we first talked actually, about it, we first talked about it, this was going to be on the sign. Just to give you an example, I did this in Microsoft Paint, so I apologize if it's not the greatest looking thing, but just an example of what our park rules kind will probably look like. Yeah. It's not going to be as crowded, uh, but basically just bullet points of what the rules are. Paint. 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 Uh, to just give you an idea of the rules of the park, obviously, we we'll want to elaborate on it, then we can pull up our ordinance and show them that this is the, the bird. Hey, you know what, Al? That's perfect. Uh, that's what I envision. Hey, the uh, only thing I'd recommend on the bullet point that starts out with bicycles should be. Uh, <coughs> uh, instead of driven, can we put ridden? I'll make that a Thank you, sir. Other than that, I'll have any commissioner or anything? All right, yeah, we're, that's on the Lola's exhibit. Oh, 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 okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, Thank you. I was going to go over there. <laughs> yeah. I don't see it. This is a test. Y'all just, just trust me. I, 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 I yes. Now, um, so, okay, we can. This first reading, I'll put on the consent agenda. Out of objection. So, order. Next item. Thank you. Uh, next item. Uh, resolution authorizing the mayor to execute a contract with Shelby County for fire services. All right. You step here. You want to have us present this to us? Who's going to be? Emily, you want to give us your legal opinion on this? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, you want to give us legal opinion on this? This is a, this resolution um, in the attached. Uh, <laughs> Contract within a local agreement, um, obviously for the fire services. What this contemplates, what the, the, the uh, DOC adopts this um, resolution, and then also the Shelby County Commission uh, adopts the correspond their corresponding resolution. This would initiate would be the first step initiating uh, Lakeland's fire department. The resolution, as you know, Lakeland um, presently owns a fire department, a fire station that uh, Shelby County operates out of, um, and and uh, in July. First, July 1st of 2019, Lakeland would uh, begin operation of the municipal fire department. This, as, as I've explained, we've all talked about, uh, in order to do that, obviously, we have, there's a lot of work that has to be done between now and then as far as getting chief uh, outfitting the department having ready to go on day one. But this is the document that uh, this resolution, uh, if, if you guys adopt it, will in fact send notice of termination to Shelby County for the lease that's there presently uh, and has sort of formally kicks off and puts us on the hook to have a fire department up and running on July 1st of 2019. The, the coverage areas uh, are outlined in the uh, exhibit to the, the contract. The coverage areas are effectively the same. And what I mean by that is there, there are certain areas where the Lakeland Fire Department will be first in. There are other areas where Shelby County will be first in. Some areas of Lakeland, Shelby County will still be first in and we will be second in. Uh, areas outside of Lakeland, um, they will be first in and we'll be second in. In reality, the coverage areas for the two stations that, that uh, cover Lakeland are the exact same. With one small tweak, um, which is an area outside of Lakeland, southeast of, of our municipal limits, where we are second in, that area has shrunk. And so the station that we will operate um, that, that the city presently owns the, with the Lakeland Fire Department will operate out of will be first in uh, in in sort of southern Lakeland and will be second in in other areas north north Lakeland and also some areas outside of the city of Lakeland. That is the same area that that station presently covers. The Shelby County Fire Department that operates out of that station covers those areas as well. There again, there's a we're actually going to cover a little bit smaller area as a second in, um, and the station that covers North Lakeland now will continue to cover North Lakeland or first in will be the second truck uh, up there. So Dennis uh, and Jim and uh, I and my brother in, in large part worked on this uh, along with Tom Needham and uh, Chief uh, Vincent at, at Shelby County. Um, there was a lot of back and forth, a good exchange. The, the county worked very well. They were very easy to work with uh, in this process to kind of get us to this point to document all of this uh, to where everybody understands what's, what's going to happen. They, they seem very satisfied and, and uh, ready to sort of 
handed off to us at that point. There's a good working re relationship with uh, the city and the county right now, and I would anticipate that once we have a chief in place that that would, uh, that would continue. I think it's important, it's important for the, this board to know that if you move forward with this and Shelby County does the same, that that's it, we're, we're, we've got to get going. We've got to get a fire department up and running in a year and a half. <coughs> so this is pretty huge. Um, it's one I really want to put on the consent agenda. It just, uh, just seems a little flippant, but um, for, such a, for such an important move. Um, this, this is a great example of two government bodies, and you, and you see so many bad examples out there, things that have gone bad between government bodies. This is a great example of a, of a huge success story, and two working together to develop a, uh, to develop a healthy partnership. So I'm, I'm really happy to see that. I appreciate y'all's work. I really do. And you have Tom Nadel and Chief Wolf and Chief Benson all over here. I say the same thing. I'll just extend that on my behalf. I'm sure other commissioners as well. That a uh, big thank you to them. All right. So, yeah. Because this effectively starts the fire department, the clock running, I would like to see an exhibit to show the funding piece of it, where it's coming from, There's the timing of the funding uh, as an exhibit. Obviously, it's something that we've all voiced separately our uh, approval for, and it's something that we desire. We went to let the legislator and got you know, consideration to be able to collect fire fees. We're hoping to make a big difference in in those fire fees, but we need to understand exactly how the time is going to work because it may affect other things, and we need to go ahead and we effectively approve this, we're basically effectively, ear, effectively earmarking other funds. Yeah, um, so, and, and so uh, one of the things to that uh, point is uh, last time the Chief Wolf came and presented to us asking some specific questions about his presentation and what factors he used to come up with his ultimate figure and um, now I think I found that uh, all were like a lower pay scale employees starting out you know whatever and I asked him I said look you know realistically we're probably going to hire some with some experience six nine years maybe some with 12 years experience and whatever and so um, in order to hire those people or to retain those people we're going to have to offer pay skills that are compatible with surrounding departments uh, and the same years of experience and so I think it's going to be um, it would be prudent for us when we're figuring these things to to look realistically at what the mix may be. It may be 40% new people, 50% new people, 40, 50%, 60% experience. I don't know. I would expect it would be some type of mix like that, but uh, for budgeting purposes, I'd like to go uh, on the conservative side, which would show more experience than not so we can uh, we can overshoot this thing. Worst case scenario, um, uh, and I hate to say it because I'm real excited about it. It's going to save us money, and we're going to be able to cut this fire fee and potentially eliminate this fire fee uh, for the city. So it's a huge deal uh, for us. But um, but yeah, I want to see like uh, like Vice Mayor Roman said, you know, what this what these expenses are going to be. But we we got. I mean, he was updated that. So we do have updated numbers, and so okay. we'll just have to catch it next time. We can go and study it, but uh, but once again, great job. Thanks for thanks for real thing you spill, Vice Mayor. <laughs> real quickly, what action does Shelby County have to take? I know we have to take action, but uh, they, they have to approve it. Yeah. Well. yeah, yeah, and we, I mean, it's been a great negotiation so far. But we don't expect any issues with that. Okay. Great. The uh, any other questions, comments? I, I'd like for this to stay on the regular yeah, agenda. Agree. Just to be, as you mm -hmm. I, I received a call yesterday from a Lakeland resident that's friends with a uh, somebody. Uh, well, he worked for Shelby County Fire, and he was asking when an application would be open, things like that. I think that's one thing that once this is official, we're going to start answering some of those questions. Yeah, that's, a, that's another thing that I asked Chief Wolf to uh, figure in is what this thing looks like with, uh, with uh, salary uh, and benefits, uh, similar to that. Uh, sort of thing. Now, we, have, we have 457 plans. We have defined uh, contribution plans. We have to define benefit plans, which I, I don't shy away from on the fin. I think that's the way we need to stay. I think, uh, I 
think government bodies are going to be away from these defined benefit plans, you know, to liberty. But the, uh, the Saturday range, I'd like to be able to hold our heads high when we walk in there and pay a, uh, a nice living wage that's competitive with other uh, departments around. Mm -hmm. And so we can figure based on that. Um, and I think it'll keep us from having to go through uh, perpetual recruiting cycles, you know, to be able to retain those employees. Well, be healthy. And that's the model that we use over in the school system. It worked well. Yeah, it's worked well. I've been a part of the department that once went through that. They no longer are there. They raise their salaries and their benefits. They're competitive now. Actually, they're actually a little bit higher than others, and they're flourishing. Back then, they struggled. Man, officers, one, two, three years experience leaving and going, you know, other places, and um, so it's just not. I don't, I don't think it's what we want for them. And, and as far as you know, a chief, an incoming chief, um, whoever that ends up being, um, I think we would probably get a better chief with that mentality um, than we would otherwise. And chief positions are already budgeted for, correct? Well, we have money budgeted this year. We, we started the year looking at a fire consultant, mm -hmm. but we didn't have to spend anything because Dennis people was operating through MPAS. So we had that money budgeted, and we left in the budget even through the, the past cuts we did for this reason. So we have enough in there for a half a year of, of chief salary. So we are we do not need a budget amendment yeah. for each month. So tell us who it's going to be. <laughs> I'm just I need that'd be the first uh, order of business. <laughs> all right, all right. We'll be on the edge of our seats. The edge of our seats. Any other comments? No, sir, that's a biggie. Thank you for that. Uh, next item, please. Uh, resolution authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with Ewing and Marketing Partners for public relations consultant services related to the Lakeland 2020 vision. Okay. All right. Now, we're, we're trying to, are, are we trying to identify grant for this? Is that what it is? Or we, 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 we have it. We uh, haven't yet. No. Correct. There was talk, uh, I thought, of a did I hear that from the chains there? Well, the chamber, yeah, I think you're thinking about the chamber of your hands. All for, for marketing services. Yeah, right. right. Marketing services. Mm -hmm. All right. Is that is this what we're going to do? Maybe we, we haven't have 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 talked specifically about it, but we can, we can talk with them about it. There is money <coughs> from that grant that held for marketing services. Mm -hmm. Can you talk to the chamber just about that? I think that was that an age grant? Yes, that's yeah. correct. Oh. Okay. okay. All right. <laughs> I'd like to get an update on that grant if we can before the next meeting. Sure. All right. Um, that that won't go on the consent agenda. I do want to talk about that grant. Do you have any comments about that? I should say, I think we've looked into the grant before, and I think the grant was not able to go directly to the city. That's why I need to go to the chamber. Uh, the chamber was working very closely with the city in order to do some joint marketing and some other things. I don't think it did go to the directly to the chamber, so directly to the chamber, the so chamber they would have to adopt this. Yeah, so there's so the chamber wanted to take one piece of it, you know, like the uh, the economic development piece of it or something, mm -hmm. that maybe we could peel that off for them. Yeah. Um, <coughs> but that makes sense. Okay. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, if we could just work on that and sure. discuss I'll start with them what the options would be. <coughs> I'll, I'll start with the Brittany we can we can work on that. That'd be great. All right. Yep. Looking forward to this. I'll be on the regular agenda. That'd be good. That'd be nice. Yep. All right. Uh, next item: Resolution authorizing the mayor to execute a residential subdivision development contract with Renaissance Development LLC. Can I can I stop here right there? Yes. This this group. Uh, did I also hear that this group is the same? Is this the same group that did the Kyrels uh, deal? That's correct. Public? They they work for Kyrel. Who else do they work for right here? Um, I don't have a full list. Okay, okay. but that was, that was they did part. work. They did work. This is the same one because I've heard about that. I heard great things. Correct. Well, it's actually it's not the same company. Uh, Susan Ewing led that effort with another company. She's on her own with a new company. Okay. So, so the same good. individual that did that project for her. Okay. Yeah. So it's a, it's okay. a good match for us. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. A, uh, resolution authorizes the mayor to execute a residential subdivision development contract with Renaissance Development LLC for a 12 lot subdivision to be known as Winstead Farms Plan Mixed Use Development Areas 1 and, and 2, Phase 1. And rescinding resolution 2017 slash 10 75. Okay. All right. Um, Y'all want a presentation on this? Y'all familiar with it? No. Okay, we'll go to the consent agenda with this without objection. So, work. 
Uh, next item, resolution authorizing the mayor to execute a residential subdivision development contract with Renaissance Development LLC for a 15 lot subdivision to be known as Winstead Farms Plan Mixed Use Development Area 2, Phase 2. Okay. Same thing here. Okay, with the consent agenda. Yes. All right. Uh, so ordered. Next up. Uh, next item, discussion on general assembly uses. I will be brief. Um, Don Williams, the original applicant looking for the General Assembly or for the drove that in for General Assembly, unfortunately has lost his contract on that piece to Tommy. I uh, came in, I met with him and his wife, and um, shortly thereafter, oh, well, I met with him and his wife, I kind of gave him some ideas that I thought we were going to approach this board with. Shortly thereafter, he called me and said, unfortunately, the seller would renew the contract. And, but it's not necessarily all the timing issue. It is uh, a lot of issues with the valuation of the property, and among other things. Nevertheless, I thought a lot of good work was done, and a situation was identified that we probably want to follow up on. Uh, and I'd like to kind of just very briefly tell you where my head is with regard to what I understand or how I perceive this board's response to the General Assembly um, just blanket permissions. In reviewing it, I, I don't really agree with the approach either. I agree or I share much of the sentiment you guys do. The impact or the potential of impact, un, using the word regulated, but unregulated or at an unregulated pace could potentially become too much in my opinion. So fast forward through the unnecessary explanation of that regard, I kind of get back into handling it in a similar fashion that the winery is handled. Treating it as a conditional use permit it's uh, creating a new use in the zoning ordinance that specifically defines that use uh, and, and how we would regulate it based on intensity of the use, the timing of it, the time, the hours of operation, things of that nature. I do want to speak with the city attorney. I mean, that we have this agritourism push in this, in this country and in the state. Uh, the properties and agriculture are arguing that, hey, we should be able to have properties on this beautiful farm, that they want to come into barns and have a wedding amongst the livestock that's wholly appropriate while i don't agree nor disagree there is potential in my opinion for that to spiral a little bit out of control anybody's been to a southern wedding knows they can get pretty big pretty quick so i thought maybe i'd like your quick feedback on if i'm on a track that you guys agree with or or if if we should just continue with status quo and wait and deal with it if it comes back a lot i think you for something like that to be creative, I'd like to see how it turns out. Okay. All right. Well, I, I'm kind of in the same position. I was the, the one that was kind of the naysayer in the whole thing. I didn't like the idea of uh, doing anything that would potentially, allowing anything that would potentially change that rural setting that people invested in. You know, when I talked about Jim and Emily, they live in North Lakeland and they bought it there because the low traffic bar and the scenic routes and all that stuff. Well, uh, you know, you, you add, you know, 100 cars two days a week uh, up there and you got a whole lot of traffic, a whole lot of traffic, you got a whole lot of uh, headlights and stuff and a lot, a lot of noise potentially uh, in an area. You just invest in a different type of lifestyle, so you ruin that. But somewhere like the winery, you know, the winery is like right off the interstate. You know, while it is agriculture, it's right on the interstate. That's maybe one that I would say, you know what, I wish we had something like that. Because it would work in that particular spot. When you move it over a half mile, and I'd say it didn't work. You know, but I think it does work uh, there. So, I think it would be used very, very rarely. I hope it would be used very, very rarely. But I think, uh, you know, a creative way to make things like that happen that are in just those few unique areas that aren't disrupted wouldn't change our lifestyle, maybe add <coughs> add to it. I think it would be good options. Yeah. What are y'all's thoughts? I think we should pursue changing the ordinance to where we give more direction right. so they understand, you know, special use in what situation of special use to make it a right. benefit. Uh, that way we don't have someone come before us and be like, you know, it's a great idea, but it's just not a good fit. If we could give them more direction on the front end, I'd like your idea to go ahead and, and uh, start funneling them to the right direction. Okay, one, one of the reasons I didn't mention, one of my biggest issues with this is just having the General Assembly 
we all have positive thoughts on what that would be. Everybody pictures the weddings, but if we start allowing general assembly by right, we can also by right allow an alternative general assembly. And we can start having, you know, different things that may not be what residents of Lakeland want to see going on in the community. So I think that the conditional use or especially some some nature allows us to to kind of contain that a little bit by like you said clearly defining what that use is. Well, to the vice mayor's point, could we do it a lot like we do uh, our zoning areas? Like this area is going to be a future commercial area. This is going to be future residential. So we could outline an area, and there may be very few of them, maybe two or three or four throughout the whole city, and just say this piece, this area right here is eligible for this type of thing. Or it could be commercial or you know, whatever in the future. But it's agricultural now if you want to do some assemblies here. And, and we can, and they could come in. They could look at it in the map, and they can say, okay, you know, a conditional use permit for assembly, or assembly of some type would, would work here according to the board of commissioners' plan. Um, that would give them a little more information up front. Now it might tie our hands. We might say, hey, we really don't want that anymore. And then they go to the court and they say, hey, they already said this is it. We invest in the property. Whatever. What do you think? The, the private consultant me side, I can't believe I'm saying the public consultant me side, I, I, met, I, I, would, I would like the conditional use vehicle because we can take it on a case-by-case -case basis. We can limit hours. It, it, we, we stay out of zoning properties and other issues that could potentially arise. And it would afford us the luxury of having an open door policy that, hey, this is what the house of the door looks like. And the Wilsons were very good about it. When we talked about it, they were, you know, we, we, we understand. We start building parking lots and things. This isn't really a farm anymore, but we, we get into a rural area. Uh, how can we be good neighbors? And they had done a lot of their own work working with the neighbors, and I think really that's who we want. Unfortunately, if time had got the best of it on this deal, and I think we can, we can do this right. I've had a lot of experience doing conditional use permits in different districts, and we've handled how they're regulated. So, we can heed your advice, kind of see how we can mold all that, shape it all together, collaborate, come back with something down the road, and uh, give you a work session idea that's what we're doing to make improvement on this. Work for me. All right. Great. Thank you. Right. Yes, sir. Appreciate you. You're all right. It's not the first time. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Anybody got any announcements? I was going to put out there about, um, about security and if we can get look into getting a sign, an extra sign, or how many we get, and what it costs to get a uh, kind of share of vehicles, let's say along 64, one in that area, just for that area, another one for north of 40, along Canada and Sea Tip or something, where we get dedicated vehicles versus you know whatever we have now. Look into that. Yeah, yeah. I'll meet with the sheriff. Are you talking about meet with the sheriff? Talk to him about funding alternatives for maybe dedicated vehicles to the city. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, that was when you know. That, that's, yeah. Go ahead. We. This has come up a few times since I've been working with the city. Once, maybe three or four years ago, the first time, and and I spoke with the sheriff's department and uh, had some pretty extensive communication with uh, uh, Chief Barn, Chief Barn. Um, Quite honestly, there was not a lot of interest. Uh, you know, you know, in fact, at the time, the explanation that I got, the response that I got was, well, we'll be happy to meet with the, your city leaders and explain to them why there's not a lot of interest uh, from, from our perspective. And so uh, we could reach out again. Uh, that was, there was some follow up again uh, a year or two later, perhaps, um, more recently. And, um, again, sort of didn't get a lot of traction, um, in large part because they, the answer is not that they're not interested, but what they have responded with is you get a high level of service now, perhaps we can better explain to you the level of service we have and work, learn to work better together. If there's concerns, you know, we can we can address those concerns. But the idea of uh, dedicated cars, dedicated officers, um, an increased level of control for some, some amount uh, of payment from the city, at that time they, there didn't seem to be a lot of uh, interest in that from the Sheriff's Department, but we can sort of follow up and see if things have changed. Um, but that's the back, kind of the background. One thing that I've always sort of been interested in trying to collect, and I don't know if Jim you can do that or if it's the Sheriff's Department, is just maybe five years worth of data on a month by month basis because we get the monthly report. Mm -hmm. and like, for instance, this month it was down five. 
that's what uh, the sergeant said. It'd be interesting to see going back over the past four, five, six years, somewhere in that neighborhood. Is crime in Lakeland pretty consistent? Because we had 27 events this past month. And it'd be interesting to know what was it five years ago? I mean, is it really, it, it seems like it's, it's gone up. I think some of that is a little bit of social media, but mm -hmm. I hear so much of that, but then I go, man, it's 27. You know, and I'd like to know how that compares to five years ago. And another tricky part is people reporting it versus not reporting it. Right. And that's another thing that's difficult to calculate. Mm -hmm. Another thing I was wondering is, can they present something showing what their plan is right now, like where they position their vehicles? I sound like a micromanaging so the kind of sheriff. I'm just curious, like what are they, what, what is their plan? What are they doing? Were they, were they putting their cars at certain hours? And is there a, a route or something there is something they do? Maybe, I, I would think that if, we, if they get that detail of information out, it would be a, well, I don't want to put a GPS in the car. Well, it would be a potential threat to the officers themselves. Yeah. You know, if they, if they have, if there's anticipated routes or, you know, criminals could then work around those routes or those schedules or whatever. So I, I don't think they would give us that level of data. And they, probably, they do have GPS on those cars, mm -hmm. believe ironically, but that's for true, the administrative track. Go ahead. I was going to say, the attorney said that they were open a few years ago to talking about how we are covering local coverage. Basically, just an informational yeah. session. I think that would be great. I think that would be great. Yeah. 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 Good. And that's where we get some of that historical data. Yeah, so you get that data either just from a trend perspective over the years. That's mm -hmm. all. So yeah, they'd ask me to run a report for us. So yeah. if we have that meeting uh, set up, and it might be good for commissioners to submit questions or points of interest they want, they want them to share with us like that beforehand, mm -hmm. so they can be prepared. Um, all right. Anybody else have any other announcements? Seeing none. We uh, interested in adjournment. Yes, sir. All right. Well, uh, without objection, it's ordered.